Hi everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Today I have an art project for you. It's for everyone of all ages. We're going to do some cherry blossom art. But before we get started, let's take a look at some fabulous kids art. Thank you, Danny, for sending in your Earth Day art in the style of stained glass from Price Elementary, a sixth grader. And we also have Aritza, sixth grader at Gower Elementary. Um, she did a special project and she wrote, Water is important. Thank you so much, both of you, for sending in your art. I always love to see what you do and that's why I keep my email on the bottom corner of your computer screen so you always know how to reach me. So keep sending in your art, I love to see it. For today's art project, you are going to need a piece of paper and we always use a pencil to sketch. You'll want a good eraser, something to color with, and it's always helpful to have a black pen or a black crayon for outlining. And then I'm going to show you a second optional art project, which it's optional, but if you want to do it, you'll need some scissors and some glue. So why don't we go ahead and move over to the table. Okay, so as I said before, uh, we are going to do what looks like a tree branch with some cherry blossoms on it. And, you know, I'm going to start with pencil and it might be a little difficult for you to see, but remember, please be patient because I always outline with a black pen. So we're going to start somewhere down here at the bottom and our tree branch, and I'm just sketching very lightly because we'll go over it darker. Our tree branch will come over here, maybe come this way, and then up here it will break off this way and then maybe even oh, up this way a little bit. So we have this direction. And then I'm going to leave a space down here because I want my tree branch to be a little bit wider at the bottom. And then we'll have it go off maybe in this direction, maybe like that, maybe something else over here. So what we're going to do next is um, thicken the branches here. So here we'll kind of make this break off in this direction. I'll kind of do this first. And again, we're just sketching. This one will come maybe like here, up in this direction. And we'll have this branch maybe come up here. You can do your branches any way that you want. We're going to keep them very simple. Uh, when we color them, they'll just be black and white be kind of in the style of Japanese art. We'll bring this up here and maybe we'll have this one come over in this direction. Now, before we put our cherry blossoms and any detail, I'm going to get a practice page. So grab some sort of a sheet or the back of another paper that you can practice drawing some cherry blossoms. And I'm gonna show you a technique that we're going to use. And you can see I already started practicing. So you're going to start with a circle and I'll do this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm just drawing a circle very lightly and that's kind of going to be the like the frame or the outline and then just draw another circle in the center. Now we want our cherry blossom to have five petals. So what we're going to do is kind of make these little wide petals that are kind of curved. There's one it's okay if they're not all the same size. Two, we have another one here, three, and then four, and one more over here to make five. So that's kind of a technique that you can use. Um, so to practice this, you know, you can also um, overlap. So if we want to show um, two blossoms together, why don't we do a new one? So we can draw one here, and we can do a smaller one here. So what we'll do is we'll we'll draw the, the larger one first. So the same technique. How many petals does it have? It has five. So we'll have like one. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same size. Two, three, four, five, something like that. And then with this one, it's going to be behind. 
And so we have the center, and then one, two, three, and then you can't see, we'll just leave that part off. So, you know, that's a technique that we're going to be using. We'll um, overlap a few flowers. And then I also want to show you how you could draw, uh, let's say, a side view. So you would just draw a half circle, and it would be the side view of a blossom. So you will uh, draw the, the, the original, the first petal in the center, something like this. Right, and then you could have one here, and you could show one here. And if you wanted to, you kind of, you know, the stem would be coming out like that if you wanted to show a side view of it. So go ahead and you can pause with your space bar if you're using your Chromebook and practice some more of these. You can see how I've been practicing and draw them different sizes. Practice the half petal as well. And then we're going to add them to our um, tree to our branches. Okay, so I know that I want to have um, one of my largest uh, blossoms here. So I'm just going to draw a circle here and I'm going to want another one here. And he, we're, so we're just outlining, getting an idea. And why don't we do some smaller ones here? Maybe one here. We can overlap. Remember how I showed you how to overlap? I think that would be pretty. Let's see. I think we can do another smaller one here. We could also show leaves behind these blossoms. Do another one here and here. How about a little one up here? We may extend our branches depending on how these flowers come out. We'll do another one here. And why don't we do, oh, we didn't put in any half. half let's do some half circles. How about that? Let's do some half circles here. We'll, we'll do all the details a little bit um, later. Okay, so now uh, when it comes to drawing the actual petals, I'll just leave this here as a guide. So let's start with this one here in the center. So I'm just kind of sketch, I'm still sketching. Remember we're going to try to show um, five petals. And you know, the tips can be a little curved. They don't have, but then again, you know, this is a project for all ages. If you're more comfortable, you know, making them simpler, by all means, go ahead and make them simpler. I want that one a little wider. One here and maybe one here, okay. So I'm just going to go through and fill in my circles. Um, just like I showed you on the practice paper. Okay. Remember, if I'm going too fast, if you need more time, just pause. And sometimes, you know, you can overlap a little bit. That's fine. But you can see how the circles kind of help guide your flowers. So here I'm going to do this, this one first. So it's in front. And then this one will be behind. So not all the petals will show. It gives the illusion of depth. Remember this one, I'm going to turn my paper. So we have this first. And then we can show this and this and maybe that coming up. And we'll erase all the extra lines that we don't need. And it's actually better if they are not perfect because we are drawing something from nature and you know sometimes petals fall off sometimes they get crinkled and sometimes it just looks better so just try your best don't worry you could really get hung up with you know, trying to do these over and over again, but just try your best. And like I said, we have students of all ages watching and trying this project. So just try your best. Try not to get frustrated. I'm just using the same technique 
And it's okay if the flowers behind that are smaller have maybe four petals. That's okay too. No one's going to be really paying attention to that. Okay, so I've drawn some flowers. Why don't we add in some leaves at this point to add interest? So maybe we can show a leaf coming off back here. So we want to show it coming from behind and maybe just a, a line out like that. Maybe we could have two leaves coming out from back here. Maybe just the tip of a leaf this way. And, you know, we could even put some leaves on the branches, just coming directly out from the branches. Oh, I forgot to put some flowers over here. Why don't we, why don't we do a couple here? Because that was looking pretty plain. You can see I'm going kind of quickly because I'll take my time when I outline with my pen. And I'm going to paint. So maybe you have some crayons that you can use. Okay, so I'll put some leaves in here. Maybe some lines to add interest. And we have, maybe we'll put another leaf coming, a smaller leaf coming behind this one. Maybe we can even extend this, something like this. We'll figure something out when we get to that part. Okay. There. You can add leaves in later as well. Okay. So when it comes to outlining, um, if you've watched my lessons, you know that I like to use two different weights of pen, a, a thicker weight and then an ultra fine Sharpie point. So I'm going to start just outlining um, the outer edge uh, with with the thicker. And we're going to make the tree branch very, um, I want to use the word craggy, meaning like a twisted, like a twisted old stick. So I'm just going to take my pen and kind of like make the branch kind of go in and out. And maybe there's some spots where there could be like some knots on the tree branch. Like it's okay to make it kind of wiggly and go in and then out and then it should get narrower as it goes up. So we'll kind of like do the same thing here and then bring this up here. Okay, and I'm getting closer to these petals so I might uh, extend the lines here but with them, when it comes to the petals, I'm only going to use the thick pen on the perimeter of the petals. Why don't I do this first? Um, in order to practice, I'm going to first do the center. And for the center, I'm going to use, like the center circle, I'm gonna use some dots. And then I will outline this with a thinner pen. Something like this. And now it's easier for me to see details. So I can close that gap right there. And I'm just going to do the perimeter, the outer perimeter of the flower with my thick pen, or you would do this with your black crayon. And leave the inside part um, for the, the fine tip Sharpie. Uh, we will do the perimeter of the leaves with the thick part, and then we'll use this fine line here. What you can also do is you can have some lines coming out from the center here, okay, to add interest. And then I'm gonna show you a trick of how we're going to decorate the branch before I do the rest of the flowers. So we're gonna make some lines that kind of give the idea of this branch being twisted and old. So I'm just gonna put some lines. Some can go all the way across. We don't wanna stripe it. You don't wanna make it look like a candy cane. You know how candy cane stripes go um, all the way across and they're all uniform or like a, like a barber post that you see outside. We don't wanna make it like that. Um, we're just gonna do some lines that kind of show. And here, here you can show like a little, a knot, like it's a, a hole there. 
we can do another one like right there and let's see we can do a few more lines through here Some can kind of go across like that. It's going to add interest when we are finished. Okay, so if I were to continue this, let's see, I'll work on this flower. I know this one's going to be in front. Do some more lines there. And just to get, just for the idea here, I'm going to use my thin pen and I'll go back over the perimeter. Okay. And then this flower is going to be behind. Something like that. Okay. And I'll fill this in with the darker, and we're gonna make it kind of scraggly and craggy and old looking. We'll do the outside leaf. We'll make this leaf kind of curve right there. There we go. And again, we can put some of those, just if we have space for a few little lines in there. Okay, so for this next one, I'm going to go ahead and you know, make these curvy. I want this branch to kind of kind of bend and go around this way and I'll make it continue like in this direction and maybe it will kind of come up like this. Be like the end of a branch. I'm trying to take my time and make it very squiggly. Why don't we have this other flower come out from here? And again, I'm just going to do, why don't I use this first here? This is the one that's kind of a side profile. And then again, I'm just going to use the perimeter with the thick pen. There we go. And then when it's time to color these petals or the blossoms, um, you can use red or pink or red and white or pink and white, but generally there are reds and pinks. And then we're gonna have this other one going around here. And again, it's hiding back there. See, you don't see all the petals because it's behind. And let's do this one too. I'm glad we practiced on the other paper. So now I'm just gonna do the outline again. And the different line weights will really help. I think I will do that one there so he stands out. And then this one as well. We can do some. Little lines there. The center of the flowers will be yellow. So I'm just going to continue this same pattern and keep going here. Let's see. And I will erase some of the pencil lines.
it's starting to it's starting to really take shape I can see how this is going to be very pretty once it's all painted too again I think it really helps try your best to do these squiggly squiggly lines like we want it to be an old piece of twisted wood Do this leaf here. I'm just going to go through and do these flowers. And then we'll outline. Okay, and then we're gonna have this one maybe like come up and end like this. Yeah, so I'm noticing a lot of these cherry blossom trees or other, I have a nectarine tree in my front yard and it has all of these blossoms on it right now. And I don't know if any of you have allergies, you've been noticing <laughs> the increase in pollen because you might be sneezing more. There's more like birds and blooming flowers outside. It's beautiful, everyone's yards look very beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to add some detail in here. You kind of get the hang of it, like once you start making a few. those details on the branches. Okay. Oh, I'll outline these flowers. Just take your time. Maybe you'll just relax while you are creating your cherry blossom branch. It takes a little while because we're adding a lot of details. Okay, now I'm just going to finish this top part over here. And again, I'm going to still try to make it like a very squiggly, like old, craggy branch. Now I'm going to split it off into two directions here, over here. And take this part here. And as we go farther out, I'm going to make it thinner. Maybe we'll kind of end it like that. I'm gonna continue with the same technique. I'm going to draw the flower first with my ultra fine Sharpie. And then we'll outline it. Do the same thing here. And again, remember, I'm just outlining the perimeter. I'm leaving the fine lines there on the inside because it, it really, I think, makes the art look better that way. Let's do some. Okay, and then let's add these squiggly lines here. Some can go all the way across, but not all. We can have them, why don't we do like a hole there. We're almost done. 
Okay, do some circles here. This does take quite a bit of time, but I think the finished product will be well worth it. This is something you can give as a gift. Oh, I just thought Mother's Day is coming up soon. I'll do an, a Mother's Day card with you before Mother's Day, but this could be the present to go with the card. Okay, and then let's see, we're almost done with that. We could do these. You could put a few little kind of like you know, lines coming off like that to add interest, like little twig marks, this. Okay, and I'm almost done, I'm gonna, I'll do these, this outline here. Yeah, art is a great thing to give as gifts, especially if you don't have spending money. You can take your time and do a really nice drawing. I know my mom always likes getting my art as a present. Okay, so, so far I think that's, I'm pretty happy with what that looks like. I'm gonna just very lightly take away some of the pencil marks, especially on the circles. You don't have to though, especially if you're just practicing and sketching. I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time. Sometimes I think it's okay to pencil marks show through your art because it shows your process. And I'm just gonna do some of this right here. There we go, that's fine. Okay, so when it comes to painting, uh, you can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, you can use oil pastels. And let me put my pen, let me clear my desk space a little bit here so I have room to, room to stretch out. Okay, so I, I always, you know, if I do this, I paint sample colors from my paint kit so I know the color. So I'm going to make my blossoms this red color. And the actual branch, we're going to kind of do this in the style of Japanese art, it's just going to be gray. And we'll use the black faded into gray and then into white. And the center of the um, the center of the flowers will be yellow. Okay, so I know um, I'm going to do the yellow first because I want to give it time to dry because I don't want the other colors uh, bleeding into it. So I'm just going to try to do that and let it dry a little bit and then I will go and paint something else while that part's drying. You have to think about like what colors, sometimes you want colors to blend together and sometimes you don't. There we go. I just realized, where was it? There was a leaf Oh, that I didn't put a line in, but that's okay. But still, since I saw it, I will fix it. I still have my pen handy. Okay, so let's see. I will start on my branch. Okay, so I've taught you before, if you have the light coming from a certain side, you're gonna have darkness. So um, let's, let's imagine that our light is shooting down. Here's my eraser. The light is shooting down um, this way. So, Let's see, I'll try to do the underside of the branch a little bit darker. So that's the method that I will use. Our light source is coming from the top. And so I'm just gonna take um, my brush and just do, I'm gonna start with some dark here and then, or some gray, and then I will fade it. I'm just going to go all through here. So it's just going to be gray to white on the branches. And now I'm just going to take my just water and kind of soften this a little bit here. You kind of see that? There. 
So I'm going to use this technique. Let me hold it up and kind of see what I did. I'm going to use that technique as we go. So the bottom part of the branch will have, so I'm trying to see if I can carry that through. And it's okay, like sometimes the branches are going different directions and it's hard to know like what part of the branch you want to, to darken. So just do what you think looks good. Here, it gets really narrow, so I just barely have a little bit of black. I think it's more interesting if we show some, some shading rather than just do solid black. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's just, it's just little, it's just very simple, but it works. Just very subtle and soft. Okay, and here I'll still kind of do some right here on the side, like that. Okay, and then when it comes to this, it's going straight up. Maybe I'll just put some over here on the right side. Like I said, just use your best guess if you don't know where, where to shade. There. And I might go in and darken parts of that in a little bit. Let's see. This is like the main, the thick, the thickest part here. So I might add a little bit more shading here. Okay. And why don't I move on to the leaves? Cause I'm still trying to let that yellow dry. It's going to use a little green on the leaves and maybe I'll just do again part of the leaves. It's very soft. Maybe I'll do the leaves darker at the base. And then I'm still leaving white in here. There we go. Or else there's some leaves here. Yeah, and really, you know, this is your art. So you can shade it or color it in however you'd like to. Experiment. Okay, so I don't have pink. I'm gonna experiment, oh, there's more green. I'm gonna experiment with red on my cherry blossoms. There we go. There's one more over here. <laughs> any more? Did I miss any leaves? Um, no. Okay. So when I color my cherry blossoms, I am going to start with the outer tips of the petals like this. The outer tips and then I'm going to fade it in. And I will add more water to that to soften that transition. But so see how I have just the tips. And the good thing is if when you're fading red, it ends up looking um, pink. There we go. So I'm still kind of fading it in. So it kind of leaves some white there at the center and it's supposed to be darkest, the most color on the tips. So I'm just going to do the same method here on these folded flowers. And then move on to this guy. 
Then again, I'm adding water to kind of fade, fade that look in. Okay, and I think what's also going to be very pretty is that, you know, we used, we used green with red and red and green are complementary colors. So they always look great together. They just really are colors that pop and become vibrant. I'm just gonna fade this in a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to continue this pattern Maybe I'll give this one to my mom for Mother's Day. Sometimes moms don't want more stuff. Like they're happy with like an art piece of art that they can put on the refrigerator or, you know, on, on their mirror in their room or something. Sometimes people don't want to just have more stuff around the house. Okay, I'm just trying to soften that with water and fade it in a little bit. And like I said, these cherry blossoms are usually pink or red. From where I'm sitting right now, I can see I'm at my house and I'm in front of a window and I have a tree in my front yard that will soon have nectarines, but the blossoms are bright pink. They're different. They're not exactly cherry blossoms, but they have a bright pink flower. Oftentimes trees that bear fruit first uh, blossom with flowers and then green leaves come and then the fruit comes. Okay. This is one of our longer projects, but it's because we're really paying attention to detail. There's a lot of detail work. Some of our projects don't, our projects don't take as long, but when you have a lot of detail work like this, it's fine. I'm, I feel like totally relaxed as I'm doing this. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to take a moment here to hold it up so you can see what it looks like up close. And it's okay if, if you're using watercolors, it's okay to kind of show the brush strokes and everything. I think that's part of what makes uh, watercolors look pretty. And if you're using crayons, you can just you can um, show, use the same technique. You draw with a crayon on the tip of the petals and then just kind of draw it softer and softer as you get towards the center. So you can do this with colored pencils too. So here, this one's really little. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit of red. And then I'll be fading that in. I have one more quick uh, project to show you after this that you may or may not want to do. If you like gluing and cutting paper, I think you'll like it. Okay, I'm just going to work on fading these a little bit, softening my color. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little, I'm going to fade in a little bit of blue on the top 
just ever so slightly. I'm first putting water on. Then I'm going to take some blue and I just want the hint of color in the sky, just ever so soft. Just a very small amount. I'm just doing horizontal um, strokes with my paintbrush. I think just doing a little bit of this ever so softly adds a little bit of interest. I might add a little bit right here as well. Not too much because this, this type of art is just very, very like simple and clean looking. Okay, so we have a little bit of blue up there. Just a very little bit. Okay. So that is that is what I wanted to teach you for this for this particular um, project. And I am going to move my paints to the side and I'm going to scoot this over and show you another type of project that uh, you can do with cherry blossoms with that type of art. Okay, so what you're going to want to start with is you know you're going to want to have again a cherry blossom tree so i have like a little outline here let's see i'll just put i'll use this one have a little outline of a cherry blossom tree and um what i did is i actually like just cut out pieces of paper and crinkled them up and glued them on because i think that is a pretty effect too and i'm just going to show you how i did that so some of you may be thinking oh no i don't have i don't have pink paper so let me ask you this anywhere in your house do you have wrapping paper where you would wrap presents maybe you have tissue paper uh, that you put into gift bags if you have origami paper that works um, you could take white paper and color it pink or paint it pink so um, what you're going to do is you're going to need a pencil. So I'm just going to draw some circles of different sizes. I'm not gonna do this whole project. I'm just gonna show you how I, how I glued these. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut out the circles. Oh, I forgot to get my Elmer's glue, but I think I can reach it from where I am sitting. Or you can use a glue stick. The first one I made was with a glue stick. So you can either use a glue stick or the liquid Elmer's glue. Thank you. If you still have like magazines at the house or you know you get those, that mail on Wednesdays, which is usually advertisements and it's that light slick paper, you could cut that up too. It doesn't have to be pink. So use whatever you have around the house. That's why we call this simple art at home. Okay, so I've got my paper and here I have, I'll try this with Elmer's glue first. Let's see if it'll hold. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, here's the trick. I'm gonna take a pencil and, and I'm just going to, my, this paper happens to be thick. I really wanted tissue paper, but I didn't have any at my house. All I had was this thicker construction paper. What I'm doing is I'm squeezing it around the, the end of my pencil, okay? It doesn't matter how you do it. You can even just twist it up in your fingers if you don't have a pencil. And I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. See, see how I still have the pencil in there? I'm taking that and I'm just going to stick it somewhere. I'm just going to push it down like this. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. I'll move my arm. I'm sticking it down there. And then I'm going to pull out the pencil. And there you have a blossom. I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see it. This is 3D art. <laughs> Let's do another one. So I'm just wrapping it. Now you don't have to be perfect. It's okay if it bends in weird ways. It kind of looks better, I think. And I'm just going to smush it down on the table. And then again, I'm just going to use some glue. 
and you can do the circles of all different sizes and I think it looks better if the smaller ones are out towards the end of the branches. There we have another one. I'll tilt it to the side. You can see how that looks. Let's just do one more. You get the idea. The hardest part I think is like locating the paper. You might have something. Just think outside the box. What you, any, anything will do. And like I said, you could always use white paper and color it. See this one, I'm having a hard time wrapping it because the paper's really thick that I'm using, but it's okay. I'm just gonna squeeze it all around the pencil. It doesn't matter what it looks like if I bend it five times. That's kind of the beauty of it. I'm just gonna put some glue on it. You can use a glue stick too. Uh, the sample that I made, I used a glue stick. And you can put these wherever you want and then just keep adding them. And I think it makes interesting art. So I am just going to show you one more time my other finished product. And again, you can just draw the tree any way that you want to. You can use this same technique. That would be beautiful. I didn't have time to do that. But here's what a finished product can look like. I just put it on black construction paper to make it look extra pretty. And if I turn it sideways, you can kind of see. Yep. Okay. So um, with that, um, I will meet you back up at the easel. Okay. So here we go. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make cherry blossoms on a cherry blossom branch. I really enjoyed this, even though this took kind of a long time because we were paying attention to details. I think it was well worth it. This would even be pretty framed and um, maybe consider giving this as a gift to somebody and Mother's Day is coming up. So um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please take pictures of your art and send it in. I love seeing your work and we will look at some fabulous student art one more time and I will see you next week. Bye bye. See you next time.